How can you get cleaner, better sounding audio with less time and effort? Well, you can use Studio One and their comping system, and once you have it set up, it's as simple as click, drag, you now have room tone. Click, drag, you now have room tone, and click, drag, now you have room tone. And I'm gonna show you how to set up your copy of Studio One to make this happen. Don Barnes with Red Barnes Audio. And today we're gonna to look at Studio One and removing noise and replacing it with room tone in a narration or voiceover context. So here's the cool, here's the cool thing. Here's our audio here. I'm gonna start with 11 minutes of audio, but we're gonna just work on the first couple minutes. So let me zoom in just a little bit. Get us back to home. And you can see that I have a little bit of noise in here. And I have to tell you that this is a faked file in that. Normally I'll sit and record five seconds of room tone before I actually start narrating. I recommend everybody does that. At the end, I'll put five or 10 seconds of room tone at the end. Since I'm in the same room all the time, I really don't need to do that. I used to do that to get a noise print. But if you're in the same room, it's good to do just as a habit, but you don't really need it. But in this case, I didn't have enough noise in my beginning. I sat really nice and quiet. So I went through this audio and I found some noise for you. And let me try to play it. If you don't have headphones on, you may not hear it, but you might hear it and it is there. Okay, so there's some noise there. And what happened was it wasn't that loud, but I had amplified it for this example. Here's an interesting thing in Studio One. You can expand the track in order to see some of that noise, but sometimes I just don't like to do that. I like my track a little smaller. And so there's another option that many people don't know about. In the lower right hand corner, you have what they call data zoom. And when I click on it, I can change the visual on my audio. So I'm zooming in visually without changing the volume. Normally, I can go through and change the volume and you will see the track get larger as well. So there is a way to increase the volume. In this case, we're just changing the visual with this little control here and we're making it bigger so we can see this a little bit easier. And uh, we're going to get rid of this. So how do we get rid of this? Some people will just delete it. Of course, because it's totally in the beginning, you could delete it. But this one that's sitting right here, this would make a little less sense to delete this simply because it would change the timing between these words. If I want to get rid of this, this is another place where I've added some room, uh, some noise just for this demonstration. I've added some noise in here to make sure we had it, that you could see it and you can show, I'll show you how we get rid of it. But the big thing is, is that we want to get rid of all this noise, but we don't want to change the timing. So we're going to replace these noise, noises, mouth noise primarily, and lip smacks and things like that. We're going to replace them with room tone. So how do we do that? Well, a lot of people would put th something on the clipboard and they would paste it in, and that works fine. You can do that. But we're going to make it even simpler. Studio One has something called comping, which comes from, it, it, the term comes from composing, and it uses this concept called layers. Behind the scenes, Studio One allows you to put layers underneath every track. Now, layers are invisible, meaning they, you don't hear them. I'm going to go ahead and expose a layer that I made in advance for this demo. It's actually sitting on my template, so I can expose it anytime I wish. I can make it bigger or smaller. And this is just room tone. Now, you can't play this by itself because it is an invisible layer. It is sitting there for our use in this comping or composing process. How do you do that? Well, you take the mouse down in the layer, you click, very dramatic, you drag, and when you let go, boom, it promotes it to the top, done. Now I'll go through and I, let me do this, get rid of that one and I get rid of this one and I get rid of this and uh, oops, I went too far, gee. Well, here's the great thing about this. One, I wouldn't do it this way. So let's, let's control Z and get rid of those. Now I'm back to the beginning. Number one is, I would have probably taken this one and just gone all the way from the beginning to the end, and let's pretend I'm not paying attention, and I go too far. Well, of course, you know, I could zoom in so I can see better, but at any time you can take this and drag this back, and you can even do things like, there's another little one, let's get rid of this. I'm not gonna listen right now. Now, normally, in the beginning, when you're starting this, you listen to everything it, and make you verify, it, but if you've been doing it long enough, there are some things that are just super obvious to me, and that's just from experience and doing it wrong a certain amount of times. I brought in this noise from later in the file. It wasn't there, but if you listen to it, you'll hear a big 
Okay, I could loop that and let it play over and over again. Pretty obnoxious. So what I'm going to do, I do also have a method for getting rid of breaths that I don't like and replacing them with a really nice clean breath. So I'm not going to do that on this. All I'm going to do is assume anything I want to get rid of is noise. And I'm going to go ahead and highlight this. Boom. Done. So in other words, anytime you have something that's in this layer, you can promote it to the top track by simply clicking, dragging, releasing. There's also some keystrokes here. I can expand it all with a couple keystrokes. I can scroll left to right as well using the scroll wheel. And let's get rid of a little bit more here. And see, I missed that there. So I can go ahead and do that, or I can go back and take the original one and put the mouse here until I get a double-headed cursor, and I can grab that and go to there. It's really quick, it's easy, and we're done. So as long as you have a layer that has room tone in it, you can go any place in this file and click and drag. And if you need to zoom in because you couldn't see enough, then you can do that as well. And I would check this out. Side, got side and find out is that really something that I want to get rid of and then I'd get rid of it but it's pretty simple and if later this is really a big deal after you've done this I've done two or three of them yes I can undo but then I have to undo in order but if later when I'm listening back I realize I went a little too far or I didn't go far enough I can readjust these points at any time to get more or less in that particular fix and just extend it out here's definitely some noise here I want to get this last little tick, but if I didn't get it and I realized, whoops, I'm cutting something off accidentally, I might cut this one off here. Then when I'm totally done, if I don't like all these individual elements here, which are also known as events, then I can highlight all of them and I can control B. And when I've done that, I bounced it. And now in place, you'll see when I expand this out, it's now one contiguous file. So if I go back to the beginning so you can see what I did, all it is is clean audio, clean audio, clean audio. And I can still go back and, oh, I missed a spot here. So if I want, then I can go in and grab this. I don't have it zoomed out very much. So if I zoom it, it allows me to get a lot finer with my fixes. You can go ahead and do this and I'll get rid of this and then I'd listen to it. I do recommend you listen to it if you haven't done it a lot. But after you've done it for a while, you start recognizing things instantly that are noise and little ticks and you want to take them out, gone. It automatically puts in a 10 millisecond crossfade, which is just perfect because you don't get any clicks. And if you want to sneak in here and get these two, you can do that. Now, I'm going to run this through an RX pass at some point and it'll get a lot of that stuff, but it's really handy. It's really quick and it just allows you to replace very simply. Now, behind the scenes, I just reset everything. And so we're going to assume that you don't already have a layer. You don't already have, you don't have what I have here, which is, this is my 12 minutes of room tone that I can use and make it longer, shorter, whatever I need. And it just sits there and it's there whenever I want it. Now, I also have this as part of my template, so I don't even use that. So 90% of the time, if I'm recording my own things or we're recording here at our place, we don't do any of this. But if I want to make one from scratch, some, I'm processing somebody else's audio and I need to start with something, here's the process that I go through. I start with, with something, I find some clean room tone. I'm always asking somebody, hey, give me five, 10 seconds worth of clean room tone. And then I'll take it, hold on the control key, and I'll select a few seconds of it. So I'll select three seconds, control C, copy. I'm gonna go down here and add a new track and make sure that, that track is active, control V. And now I have a couple seconds of room tone. Now the D key duplicates that. So what I wanna do here is compact that down so you can see. So I press D a few times and now I have, you know, there's a minute's worth. And if I just highlight the whole minute's worth and press D, now I'm gonna be doing a minute at a time. And if I compact the whole thing down, I can, if I choose, select all of that. And I have four minutes of room tone and I'm now going up four minutes at a time. Now I would probably chop this off. I'm gonna eliminate that for the demo, but what I am gonna do is select everything here, control B, which bounces it all to one. So now that's just one continuous piece without seeing the individual event. And we now have room tone covering everything here. Now I'll pretend this one isn't here. I'll go ahead and add another layer. And I'm gonna take this, this, this from this track 
And remember, when I added a new layer, it assumes that that new layer is where I'm going to record on, or I'm going to put some audio on it. And instead of that, what I'm going to do is bring my audio back to the top. There's one layer. Here's the layer we're working with here. We're going to just pretend this one isn't here. I could just go ahead and hide that layer. Now it isn't there. I'm going to take this audio, and it's really complicated. I'm going to grab it, drag it, and drop it. And now this layer has the same amount of audio on it. It has room tone from beginning to end. And now I can go through and expand this out. Start at the beginning and go through and use this just like we did before. Now the final thing I'll go over is the fact that I've shown you some different ways to do this. If you're doing it yourself and you have it set up on your template, it takes you no extra time to set up this layer. If you're doing it the first time, it's going to take you 10 minutes to get that layer set up. And once you've done it a few times, it'll take you less than a minute, even if you don't have it. Once you learn how to save it off into its own and how to find it easily, then it's a drag and drop onto the new layer. And you may want to drag it to a track and duplicate it a few times, but it's still less than a minute to get it set up to handle an hour or two hours worth of audio. So it's really easy to do. And when you're done, you get super clean results. And I just want to make sure you're clear one more time. There's more details. I didn't go over everything. I skipped some things. And once you know it, you just will not believe how quick and easy it is. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope it gives you some ideas. Always know that uh, next week, next month, I'll probably have a better idea for doing this. And I have a whole class coming up, some coursework that teaches all this stuff from the ground up, assuming you know nothing, how to get it set up, how to, how to cut your editing in half is the whole principle of what we're doing. And every time we can get closer to that, it's a big win. You can put out more books, you can make more money, you can have more fun in less time. So hope you enjoy this. You have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.